Once we were a sophisticated people living in a primitive world, and through time we have become primitive people living in a technologically sophisticated world. The path to survival is a journey that begins with seven basic steps, or seven arrows as they are known. Shelter, water, fire, food, tracking, awareness, and movement. In the event that our system breaks down, having knowledge of basic survival skills could mean the difference between life or death. What is your situation? Why are you there? Um, is it safe for you to be there? Should you move? Are you injured? Is anybody else with you hurt? Do they need help? So survival situations are presented to us in many different ways. It's really that awareness of self. What am I capable of? What do I truly know? So the more skills you learn, the less dependent you are on gear, just as our ancestors. So basically, we strive for those primitive skills, meaning if you go out there naked with nothing, it's OK, because you have everything. These are the skills our ancestors used not only to survive, but to live comfortably. We also have to introduce the other primitive skills that go along with that. Certain shelters require cordage. It has always been used for tying, wrapping, sewing, knitting, binding, and hauling or pulling materials. When surviving in the wilderness, the application of cordage requires us to find and use natural materials. What I have in my hands today is cambium. This is basically bark stripped from a tree that's already been down. It's not green. And uh, it's the fibrous layer on the inside. Our very, very first piece, you're going to take this and you're going to fold it so that one tail is about a third longer than the other. I'm going to take the top tail and twist it away from me. I'm going to maintain that twist and I'm going to grab the bottom tail and then rotate it back to me so the bottom tail is now on top. I slide my hand over and I pinch and I hold it. I continue this process, twisting the top, grabbing the bottom, and pull back. The right hand. Your other right. Oh, okay. There it is. Oh. And still, you got time. You got time to survive right now. All right, cool. It's still light out. <laughs> still light. We're good. A lot of the primitive skills are so simple um, that it eludes us. And, and that's the beauty of it. They're time tested. They work. You know, there's no difference between making cordage today in this process, which is duplicated with modern machinery. It's the same exact reverse wrap process. Go ahead and pull on that a little bit and see. Ah, that's rope. Yeah, it's serious rope. Looking around for shelter, you really have to track everything. Not only the wind movement, what's above your head. So make sure that the canopy is fairly clean and clear. No dead trees on top of you. Seeing where the water runoff happens, down along the hill side here, obviously gets wet down in that little side. Right here, where our shelter area is, seems to be pretty good. Plenty of building material. Found a nice, fairly cleaned, dead tree. Placed it up on a stone on the end to give it a little more loft for a foot room. And on this side, Jim, we're going to set the, our little Ys here. Obviously, this is locked in by itself. We don't need cordage. But if, no, you don't need it. It's locked into its cell. 90% of the land on the planet and where people basically live and dwell, this is effective. Now what I've done here is I've collected a bunch of sticks and ribs. What I'd like you to do is grab the short ones in, and the mediums and start working your way up and basically making ribs at the same footprint of our door here. If you have a plastic garbage bag in your backpack, I happen to have one. You can fill it up with leaves and then dump it over. Great time and energy saver. Great little item to have in your backpack. Yeah, yeah. Poncho, water collection, you name it. All sorts of goodness there. If you get your debris up to this point, out to where I am, 30 degree temperature or less, you're going to be warm and you will be dry. You will be dry. Now that you've got this structure and it looks pretty decent, I would continue to take the leaves and push it up into the corners, up into the dead spaces where I can see light, yeah, right. obviously where I can see daylight. I've got rain. Um, this is incredibly warm, amazingly, amazingly warm, insulating. This is the perfect time of the year. If this is covered in snow, there's my insulator, snow. This shelter will save your life. Um, it is one of the most important skills, this particular style of shelter. 
known as the Debris Hut. In our next edition of Neighborhood Journal, I return to the wilderness landscape of Little Stony Point in Cold Spring with mountain scout survival expert Shane Hobell, where we explore the primitive yet practical methods of water collection and purification in part two of the Path to Survival series. Do not miss it. Your life may depend on it.